I had thought that I had been at the top of Paiute Mountain Road when I was camped last night, but I guess that wasn't true because I'm still climbing. And now I managed to find myself stuck in the snow here. The Jeep and the trailer, the tires are aired down. There's an interesting looking road behind me, Paiute Mountain Road, and I'm thinking about exploring it. Well, I'm more than thinking about it, I'm going to explore it. So just like lots of California, there's just a ton of history around here. You can see that this was actually a small community called Sageland, and it was a going concern when there was a lot of mining going on around here. You just never know when you're gonna be back to a place like this. You might think it's not that far from home, but you just never end up coming back. So everything's all set, it's a beautiful day. Let's get a little more adventuring in. So let's get going and see what Peyote Mountain Road is really like. So this video isn't sponsored, but I will have links in the description where you can purchase some of the products you see in the video. I get a little kickback if you use my link. It doesn't raise the cost of the price of the, the product to you. I've been climbing up Paiute Mountain Road for quite a while now, and it looks like I've got some more climbing to do, but it's beautiful up here. I never knew. It's my first time here. So anyways, I'll give you a look at what it looks like here. Paiute Mountain Road borders Bright Star Wilderness, and it'll take you over to Sequoia National Park. You look down here, this is rugged country, and I came up a long way. I came up from way down there. There was definitely some steep sections and some steep drop-offs on the way up. If you ever do take this road, be careful. I'm going to have to find a nice camping spot for tonight, so hopefully I can find that. I continued climbing on Paiute Mountain Road. The road leveled off and I saw a sign warning that if you're going to have an open fire you had to have a permit. That's when I figured there was camping nearby. I had a feeling there might be a nice camp spot at the top of this hill, so I decided to take the turn. But you never know when you're towing the trailer whether you might be painting yourself into a corner. I rolled the dice, took the right turn, and let the diesel motor in my Jeep pull me up the hill. Figured worse came to worse, since it was a nice straight road, if there was no place to turn around up there, I could always back down this hill. When you're solo overlanding, any problems you have are magnified because you're the only one there to solve them. As I was getting closer to the top, I could see that there was plenty of room to turn around at the top of this hill. And then, when I finally reached all the way to the top, I realized I'd hit the jackpot and found a beautiful campsite. I'll share the GPS coordinates to this campsite here, in case you ever want to go out and check it out yourself. Well, I just got done driving pretty far up Paiute Mountain Road, and I think I got to the top of the road where it starts going back downhill, and I found my campsite. It's pretty nice, man. Loving it. Just happened to see this. It's obviously been a campsite, but this place is just incredibly beautiful. I'll have to figure out what mountain is off in the distance there. Could that be Mount Whitney? Giant boulders. It's going to be windy. But my rooftop tent rated at 50 miles an hour. Get the trailer leveled out. I grabbed my shovel off the top of the Jeep. I needed to make a little room underneath the jockey wheel so I could extend it all the way. Little did I know this was not going to be the last time I was going to need that shovel on this trip. I wanted to set the jockey wheel, level the trailer, and then put my jacks down in the rear because I knew the wind was going to be buffeting the trailer and the rooftop tent. I also had set the parking brakes on the trailer. Each wheel has its own parking brake. That was one of the reasons I bought the X-Venture XV3 trailer in the first place. And little did I know, those trailer brakes separate on each wheel were gonna pay off in spades later on on this trip. With my jacks down, the trailer brakes set, the trailer leveled off, I was ready to withstand a windy night up at 6,000 feet in the top of a mountain. 
All that done, I got my tripod out and started getting some pictures because you don't get to a place like this very often. So I figured it's time to just start snapping as many pictures as I could. With an incredible view of Mount Whitney to the north, huge boulders and rugged terrain here at the campsite, and eventually the sun setting to the west over Paiute Mountain. Wow, what a place. Wow, I really got lucky to find this incredible camp yesterday. Just taking a random drive, random exploring, and finding this Paiute Mountain Road. This camp is at 6,000 feet. The wind blew like crazy last night, and it didn't get super cold, but it got pretty cold. So it's a pretty remote spot. This is definitely one of the most amazing campsites I've ever found. That's Mount Whitney out there, due north of this campsite. The plan of action for today was to continue on Paiute Mountain Road all the way over the mountain till it meets up with the roads that would connect me to Highway 178, the Kern River Valley, and take me back to Bakersfield and then to the Bay Area. It was a short visit, but I got to see that incredible sunrise in the morning. That was well worth coming out here. Everything was packed up. I did my walk around the trailer to make sure nothing was left forgotten. And I headed back out, heading west on Paiute Mountain Road. I thought I had got all the climbing on this road out of the way, but I didn't realize there was still a lot more climbing to do. Signs along the road told me I was heading the right way, but I also had my map and my Garmin GPS map 66i to help me along the way. It's definitely an incredible mountain road. And as I was climbing, I began to start seeing some snow. And then I started seeing more snow, but there were still tracks through it. And eventually, I found some snow that didn't have any tracks in it. Well, I got myself stuck in the snow here on Paiute Mountain Road, and it doesn't look too promising up ahead, so I guess I'm gonna have to turn around. And to turn around, I'm gonna have to get myself unstuck, back down the hill a little ways, and then figure out how I'm gonna turn the trailer around. That I'm not worried about. There's a lot of options with turning that trailer around. So anyways, um, it's time for me to start digging. I'm gonna use the shovel here, dig out some snow behind the wheels, try to make some tracks so I can gently back down. I was a little worried. The Jeep started sliding around and worried about the trailer sliding over the edge of this hill. Don't want that. That would be really bad. So it's going to be shovel. If um, the shovel doesn't work, I got two sets of traction boards. I'll try the shovel first. That's usually what I do. And then hopefully in a little while I'll be out of here. I sped the action up in this video by four times. Otherwise you would have been here a long time watching me maneuver this Jeep and trailer to get it out of the snow. And this video is already getting a little long. The trick to doing this was to take into account the sliding, make maneuvers to keep the Jeep and the trailer in line, and not jackknife it. Had I jackknifed it here on all this snow, I would have really been in big trouble. I faced a similar situation where I had to back the trailer up. In that case, it was uphill, and it was in the mud at a place called Trona Pinnacles. Well, I managed to get out of the snow and back down to some some dirt. Now I've got to think about how I'm going to turn this trailer around. I'd like to keep going straight on this road, but I'm figuring it keeps going higher, the higher elevation, more snow. This road will be here next time I'm around to drive it when it's not so snowed in. Now comes the next part of this operation, getting this trailer turned around because I'm not going to back all the way down this mountain, that's for sure. So now I have to get turned around and I don't have much road to do that on to make some maneuvers to turn this trailer around, at least not at my level of trailer towing ability. But what I do have is a trailer that has a brake on each wheel. So I can disconnect my trailer and I can, I can put one brake on on one wheel and I can pivot it. Well, I'm all set up to try to pivot this trailer. I have the brake set on the other wheel. I set myself up some safety here and then take the pin out. So everything's unhooked from the Jeep. Now I'm gonna let the brake loose here and see about pivoting this trailer. Okay, take another bite at this apple. 
Try to get this thing to spin all the way around this time. I don't think I'm gonna have enough leash to do that, but. Now it's gonna take a mighty shove. That's about exactly where I wanted the trailer. I'm actually supposed to be heading home today. I might get home a little later than I thought, but that's okay. We ran into a little bit of difficulty and then when you're out overlanding, you're out doing anything, you're sitting on the couch, you don't have to worry about this kind of stuff. But we're getting out, we're seeing nature, bringing our mechanical devices along and when you do that uh, you sometimes end up with stuff like this so anyways i'm going to hook this trailer up and get going I'll take a last look here at where i was stuck maybe i should have stopped and thought about it before i drove up there i'm all turned around uh the snow patch that stopped me uh, i managed to get out and i i'm real thankful that i have such a great uh off-road trailer that x venture trailer with the brakes on each wheel and it's just so maneuverable i was able to pivot that thing around and get out and and now i'm all hooked up ready to go so let's continue this journey out of the Paiute mountains and back down and see how the rest of it goes well i didn't make it over the entire Paiute road i had to turn around and come back and now i'm going to be on asphalt here so i'm going to need to air the tires up get ready for the drive home it was an incredible trip i had a beautiful campsite overnight so it was well worth it. I managed to get myself unstuck in the snow and turned around. If you appreciate the video, you find any value in it, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out more of my other videos and definitely leave a comment, especially maybe you have some ideas of what might have worked better when I was in that predicament stuck up in the snow. This has been a great adventure and it came out with all my fingers and toes. I'm looking forward to the next one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. And don't forget, the best is yet to come.